This lecture is part of a series of lectures for RAD229, MRI Signals and Sequences, offered in the Department of Radiology at Stanford University. Lecture 4, Extended Phase Graphs, is broken down into three mini-lectures. Lecture 4b covers sequence operations in the Extended Phase Graph domain. The learning objectives for this lecture are to define EPG operations for precession, gradients, relaxation, and nutation, to explain the relationship between matrix operations in magnetization and EPG domains, and to explain allowable transitions within the EPG domain. Let's start by reviewing the EPG definitions, as you saw in the last lecture. The easiest definitions for this formulation are given by the forward Fourier transform integrals as shown here. We can represent the EPG coefficients in this matrix Q, where the top row are the F plus coefficients, the second row are the F minus coefficients, and the bottom row are the longitudinal or Z coefficients. The integrals for the reverse transformation from EPG back to the magnetization domain are shown here as well. We will first review how BC EPG basis coefficients propagate in MR sequences. The key point is that the basis is easily propagated, which is why we use this system. Precession is a multiplication by a diagonal rotation matrix. Gradients, that is unit gradients of one cycle over a voxel, will simply shift the states uh, between, say, F1 to F2. RF pulses will actually mix the coefficients of a given order n. Relaxation will apply T2 decay to attenuate the F coefficients, and T1 recovery will both attenuate the Z coefficients, but also enhance the Z0 state. An important note is that EPG rotations have been derived as right-handed rotations. This will cause some confusion until we actually are able to revise this, um, but it's important to note. Precession is a simple rotation about MZ. We recall from previous lectures, if we have a complex magnetization representation, we can apply a simple rotation with this diagonal matrix as shown in the top right. Because the, the transformation to EPG is linear, the same rotation can be applied to a, a single order, n, of f and z states, as shown in the bottom left. Because the rotation matrix applies on the columns uh, separately, we can apply the same rotation matrix to an entire Q matrix, that is, for different orders n simultaneously. Let's now look at gradients. A unit gradient induces one cycle or two pi of phase across a voxel. The simple transformation here is that f plus sub n plus 1 is just equal to f plus sub n. So basically we're increasing the order of our states, that is we're applying a twist. So magnetization in the f plus n state moves to the f plus n plus 1 state. This is dephasing for f plus sub n, for n greater than zero, but it's actually rephasing for the f minus n states where n is greater than zero. And in general, you can apply p cycles, so you can actually increase the, the subscript or order by p. So let's look at how this works. If we start in f plus sub zero, we will simply uh, set f plus sub one equal to that coefficient. And this is equivalent to applying a gradient twist. For the f minus states, we will actually decrease the order because we are rephasing with a unit gradient. The z states are unaffected by a gradient. And again, we're assuming a unit gradient, which induces one twist cycle per voxel. And I should add the comment that you can have a negative unit gradient, which would do the opposite. So here is a picture of how gradient operations transitions work in EPG. This animation is basically showing 
the Q matrix. So you notice that the F states across the top. In this case, we have the, the F, the second row are, have a negative N, but it doesn't actually matter too much here. So watch what happens here as we dephase by three gradient cycles. Then we will re, uh, play a 180 degree pulse and we will rephase the magnetization using all unit gradients. So the magnetization dephases, dephases more, dephases more. We play a refocusing pulse. And you notice that the labels on the coefficients are updated after these transitions. One brief comment is while the gradient is dephasing, these states are not really defined because our assumption that we have an integer number of cycles across a voxel is actually not valid. So the animation here is really just to show you the dephasing, but remember that the states are only valid at the points where there is an integer number of cycles of dephasing. So let's look at a question. What is the EPG coefficient state matrix that results from applying a unit gradient to the following matrix? So in this case, it's important to note that the, the F minus sub one state right in the middle of the matrix moves over to the left, but then the complex conjugate is taken to create the top left element which is how we get the minus 0.1 times i in the top left. Otherwise, the, the components of the matrix on the top row are shifted to the right, and the z states are unchanged. Let's now look at relaxation over a period t. The transverse states are attenuated, just as transverse magnetization is attenuated. So this is fairly intuitive. So this is an example of the F minus sub two state and it's attenuated. The longitudinal states are also attenuated and for N greater than zero, there's just a simple attenuation in this case by capital E sub one or E to the minus T over T one. And this looks like this. And for the Z zero state, there is both attenuation as well as recovery as shown by this equation. And this will look something like this. So let's look in, at an animation of this. Here we have an arbitrary starting magnetization. You can easily see that the magnitude of this magnetization at certain positions is much greater than one, but we'll assume we got there through, through some special means, perhaps hyperpolarization. But the point is to look at the effect of relaxation on different states. And what you'll see is the top two rows are attenuated, but note the uh, Z zero state will have some, uh, relax some recovery. So let's go ahead and play that video. So hopefully you can see that attenuation. We can go back in this video you can see how the transverse states are all attenuated, but the inverted Z zero state is actually recovering through zero and continues to recover as we play through this uh, video. So let's look at another review question. Over to a period of tau corresponding to one T two or half a T one, what matrix results from applying relaxation to this matrix of EPG coefficients. And for convenience, we're going to approximate E1 and E2 as shown. So again, we see attenuation of all states. However, we have some recovery in Z0. So we started with Z0 equal to zero. So the recovery here is towards, uh, back towards equilibrium here. And the other states have all been attenuated according to E2 or E1. And this is the Z0 state where you see this regrowth of magnetization. So now let's look at RF rotations or nutations. 
And the most important concept here is to remember that a nutation cannot change the number of cycles in a voxel. It can mix the states of a given order, and that's what the RF rotation will do. So you see here we have the order two states shown here. We have the F plus, the F minus, and the Z. And in all cases, there are two cycles across a voxel. And an RF pulse will in general mix between all three of these uh, states. However, there are some special cases where states are simply swapped and some cases where states do not interact. So let's look at some examples. If we first consider the transverse spins after one cycle of dephasing, we have a picture shown here at right. The magnetization is in the F plus sub one state, and this is the view from above. Now, after a 60 degree tip about MX, the transverse distribution is now elliptical. If we look down on this disc after we've rotated it as seen at left, we have this elliptical transverse magnetization. You can decompose this elliptical transverse magnetization into opposite circular twists with different weights. So you see that the magnitude of the F plus sub one state and the F minus sub one state are different. And this results in this, equal, this elliptical uh, magnetization. The longitudinal states would also be affected, and this will be described shortly. So let's look at a couple of movies. Here we have magnetization only in the F plus sub two state. So there are two cycles of dephasing. It doesn't actually matter too much which state we chose here, because we have a dephased disk of magnetization here. And this will look very similar regardless of the number of cycles. We're going to rotate this 360 degrees about the MX axis, so you'll see the 3D view will change, and you'll see that the population of the different states will change. You will see growth of the longitudinal state, but then the longitudinal magnetization will then diminish as the sort of rotated disk is rotated back to be horizontal. So let's watch this movie. So you see the decay of the F2 state. We've replaced it with F minus two and we're finished. So mostly what you see here is that a 180 degree refocusing pulse is essentially moving magnetization between the uh, positive and the negative uh, dephased states here. Let's look at this, the same example, but this time the rotation is about the my axis. So for the most part, you don't see much different here. Again, the magnetization starts in F2, it goes into F minus two and comes back to F2. So EPG RF rotations can be summarized here. So dephased magnetization generally has this elliptical distribution, even after additional nutations, and we can decompose this into a sum of opposite circular twists as well as cosines or sines along mz. We can derive the, for a given flip angle, the rotation matrix just as we've done in previous lectures, but this of course is a right-handed rotation. So let's review the effect of an RF pulse in this question. So if we start with equilibrium magnetization, the EPG coefficients are as shown here, and the question is what is the effect of a 90 degree nutation about MX? So recall that the excitation will give magnetization along MY. The magnetization is negative because this is a right-handed rotation and we could actually calculate this rotation matrix if we'd like to, although this one can be done fairly intuitively. Notice also that the elements of the EPG state matrix are complex conjugates of each other. Let's look at another question. What is the effect of a 180 degree nutation about MX on the EPG coefficients?
Here we see that a rotation of 180 degree about mx gives a complex conjugate of the magnetization. And this is achieved by simply swapping the f plus sub n and the f minus sub n coefficients. You can also see this from the rotation matrix. Let's look, let's look now at a flowchart of the EPG phase graph states. So we start with a state matrix that looks a lot like our Q matrix, as shown here. Remember that the RF pulse mixes magnetization between coefficients of a given order. Gradients will shift the coefficients from one order to the next, or on the second row, they will shift them down from a higher order to a lower order corresponding to rephasing. T1 and T2 will attenuate all states, T1 and T2 relaxation, and T1 recovery will be applied to the Z0 state. Although not covered here, diffusion can actually be applied very conveniently with increasing attenuation with the uh, order of the states. A final comment here is the relationships of the EPG operations to the magnetization matrix operations that we've seen previously. And it's important to remember that the EPG coefficients are a Fourier transform of the magnetization as shown here. Rotations, including precession and nutation, use the same three by three multiplication matrices. And this is simply the linearity of the Fourier transform, that if I apply a, apply a rotation matrix to the M, I can apply that same rotation matrix to the F and Z uh, coefficients. Relaxation also has the same form due to linearity, the attenuation is identical, and the recovery is only in the Z0. And this is because we're essentially taking a Fourier transform of a constant, which would only give us a signal in the Z0 coefficient. Gradients would be applied using a linear phase if we had a three by N magnetization matrix, as we saw in some of the examples previously. In EPG, this is a simple shift. So this is very much like the Fourier shift theorem. So let's, so to summarize this lecture, sequence operations are easily applied to EPG coefficients. Precession is a three by three matrix multiplication. Gradients shift the transverse F plus and F minus coefficients. RF pulses use a complex valued rotation matrix, just as we've seen before. And relaxation is a combination of attenuation with all states with recovery applied only to the Z0 state. So next we will see what are some examples of how EPG operations can be used to simulate sequences.